Welcome. Oh, I am tired. It is Friday. Keep thinking it's Saturday, but it's Friday. And um, we're due for a Greek lesson. Normally I've been doing these on Saturdays, but I have to work tomorrow. So that's just not going to happen. So uh, we're doing it today. So for the next eight weeks, nine weeks, it's going to be Fridays, 9 a.m. instead of Saturdays at 9 a.m. Pacific. And uh, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. But the good thing is these uh, streams are recorded for added flexibility. So if you need to come watch it later, you can do that. In fact, if you need to rewatch it, you can do that. Super simple. Uh, so no worries. Not a big deal. Uh, today we're covering off toasts, personal pronoun. And uh, next week we'll cover a few other nouns, pronouns, demonstrative pronouns before we get into verbs. Okay, so um, we're basically putting everything together that we've learned about nouns. First declension, second declension, third declension, adjectives. And we're all... Uh, we're fleshing out some of the finer details um, to get the big picture on nouns. And then we're going to dive into verbs. And then our world is just going to explode and then suck back in together and implode. I don't know if an implosion sounds like that, but um, that's okay. We'll take it one step at a time, one lesson at a time. And uh, Mounts talks about the fog. So it's important that you go back and review from time to time. Look at your notes. Don't just be plowing ahead. You got to look back. What might seem cloudy to you today, when you look back on it, might become clearer. And that's a really useful strategy for studying Greek. So you got to make sure you're reviewing. Don't just keep plowing forward. Also, you need to look back, review your notes, review concepts that uh, either you felt like you didn't know very well, or even concepts that you thought you had mastered. Review it all. You don't need to review it all in one sitting, right? Do it in chunks, just like you do vocabulary in chunks. And that should really help you. So this is lecture five. Let's go ahead and dive in. And again, you should have already read the material, right? This is review. I might add a little bit of commentary and my two cents here or there, but for the most part, it is review. If you haven't read the material yet, you need to go do that first. Hit the pause button and come back to the video later. Watch the archive of it later, but you need to read the material first. So remember, we have three declensions, first, second, and third. Nouns ending in alpha or eta follow the first declension. Wait a second, am I on the wrong lecture? I think I am, hold on. Yep, we need to be on this one. This is lecture six. We're moving right along. I knew I did something wrong. Okay, so we're working on the personal pronoun and then we'll get into avtos. So the personal pronoun, which is I, me, you, we, us, okay? You're gonna see these sometimes, but not all the time. Why? Verbs have built-in person, just like Spanish, okay? Uh, so what that means is the personal pronouns are optional. When they are present, it is for emphasis, okay? When they are present, it is for emphasis. Now, usually,
usually order, the word order doesn't matter a whole lot because it's still a case ending system. Ego is nominative singular. You know, like Lego, my ego. Ego is nominative singular. And it is only nominative singular. So when you see it, you know it's nominative and it's functioning as the subject of the sentence. It does not have to go first. However, if, say, the accusative, me, is first, it's probably for emphasis. So word order doesn't matter except for when it does. <laughs> that doesn't really help, does it? Look for what comes first and then look at the context. Determine, is there emphasis going on here? Now, um, ego is I, mu is my or of me, me, which is uh, me, Omicron, Yoda, is to me, it's dative, me is the accusative, me. So that would be like the object of the sentence rather than the subject. The nominative plural is e me, we. Genitive plural uh, is e moan. This looks like it's slightly off. In size. There we go. Any time now. Go ahead and start that slideshow. <laughs> All right, there we go. So I need to make it even smaller. There we go. That'll work. <clears throat> so uh, the genitive plural is emon, our. Or of us. Dative plural, emin, to us. Accusative plural, imas, us. Now, the genitive singular, dative singular, and accusative singular have alternate forms where it starts with epsilon, emu, emmi, emme. When they are in these alternate forms, they also have an accent. Otherwise, mu, me, and me do not have accents. So that's the first person. I, my, to me, me, we, our, to us, and us. Okay, so that's the first person. Second person... is C, you, su, your, or of you. The alternate is su with an accent. C, that sounds just like the nominative singular, but it's spelled differently. C, to you, the alternate form taking an accent. Se, the alternate form taking an accent. You. Now, nominative singular and accusative singular second person is the same, you. It's just the context is different. You can tell what you is doing 
in Greek, whereas in English you can't without the word order. Nominative plural, emis. It sounds just like the first person plural, but the spelling is different. Emis versus emis. Sounds the same. The only difference is you, second person you, has an epsilon. Okay, which looks like a U. Whereas emis has an eta, E as in we. Okay? So E as in we, emis. You as in emis, you. <laughs> okay? So that's how I remember the second plural versus the first plural. U, epsilon, second. E, Eda, first person, okay? So, emis, you, emon, your, or of you, emin, to you, emas, you. You'll notice, with the exception of the uh, nominative singular, genitive, dative, uh, accusative, Mm, not so much the accusative. The nominative plural, genitive plural, dative plural, accusative plural, they look familiar based on our uh, case endings with the exception of the nominative singular and accusative singular. So that helps. But you should learn this chart, okay? This is a good one to memorize. Now, We've seen this in action before, but dentals, tav, delta, and theta, per the square of stops, they drop out before a sigma, okay? So look at caris. The stem is carit. Okay, this is third declension. So sia, es son sinas. Hopefully you didn't forget that tune. So, with socia, es on sinus, anytime the uh, sigma is starting the case ending, the tav will drop off. So, carit, with the nominative singular, becomes caris. Caris. It's retained in the genitive singular because the case ending ends in an omicron. Caritos. Same with the dative singular. Cariti. Same with the nominative singular. Carita. Same with the nominative plural. Carites. Same with the genitive plural. Cariton. Now, just as we saw... Remember, third declension, whatever happens in the nominative singular happens in the dative plural. Why? Because the uh, tav is followed by a sigma, and per the square of stops, dentals drop out before a sigma. So, karit sin becomes karisin. And then the accusative plural, karitas. Okay? Don't forget that dentals drop out before a sigma. Okay, here's another one. Same thing. Tav drops out before sigma. So sia, s on sinas. Except this is neuter. Okay? The so fos is both nominative singular and Accusative singular, okay? Fos, photos, foti, fos, fota, photon, fosin, fota, okay? It's neuter, so the nominative and accusative are going to be identical. First in the singular and then second in the plural. Otherwise, all the regular genitive dative rules apply. Okay?
Now, the noun elpis for hope, uh, the stem actually ends in a delta. Delta being a dental, it's going to uh, drop, drop out. So we have uh, el elpis, elpidos, elpidi, elpida, elpides, elpidon, elpisin, elpidas. Okay? Now, we've seen the consonantal iota before. This is used in the dative. That's right. This is not a typo. The vowel, iota, used to be a consonant. What? By the time Hellenistic Greek came around, that is the spreading of the Greek language through Alexander the Great, um, it had dropped. So the, the consonantal iota was gone. It was just a vowel, except for in the dative, when it subscripts. <clears throat> so if the case ending begins with a vowel, the final stem vowel takes an epsilon. If the case ending begins with a consonant, then the final stem vowel remains an iota, except in the dative plural. So to simplify, if the case ending begins with a consonant. Then the final stem vowel remains iota, except in dative plural, otherwise it switches to epsilon. Let's look at some examples. So um, we have pistis, faith, faithful. Okay, so uh, it remains iota here in uh, nominative singular and then switches to epsilon, pisteos, pisti, pistin. So it stays yoda in the nominative and the accusative singular. And then for the rest of the plural, it ends in uh, epsilon, pistis, pist, begins with a vowel. The final stem vowel takes an epsilon. The case ending begins with a consonant. Final stem vowel remains iota, except in dative plural. Okay, so let's look at that first one again. If the case ending begins with a vowel, the final stem vowel takes an epsilon. So, socia es on sinus, right? Um, with the exception of the neuter. So we have. Pistis, so, uh, so the, the nominative singular ends in sigma. It's a consonant, not a vowel. Next one, os, right? The omicron sigma, it, be, it ends in, uh, or begins with a vowel. We're going to see the uh, epsilon instead of the yoda. Um, the next one, beginning with a uh, yoda, which is a vowel in this case, so we're going to get an epsilon. Uh, and then pistin <clears throat> uses the um, uh, second declension, ending in a... a a ni instead of a socia. So uh, that's a consonant, so we keep the yoda. And then the rest, s, on, sin, as, everything is a vowel except for the dative. And we saw the rule. Uh, if the case ending begins with a consonant, then the final stem vowel remains in iota, except in the dative plural. So it makes that switch. Okay? So that's the two rules here. And again, to simplify, if the case ending begins with a consonant, the final stem vowel remains iota. 
except in dative plural. Otherwise, it switches to epsilon. So this is a common feature of these kinds of uh, nouns that have a consonantal iota. Okay. Here's another one. Polis, city. So we have uh, the sigma at the beginning. Nominative singular, so the consonantal iota is um, retained. But then we have omicron sigma in the genitive singular, so it switches to an epsilon. Yoda switches to epsilon. Ni, <clears throat> so we retain the yoda, and then it's epsilon the rest of the way down, including the date of plural. Okay? Now, there are irregular nouns, meaning that their stems don't quite follow the patterns that we've had before. Look at patir. Another one is mitir, father, mother, idor, water. They don't quite match everything we've been studying so far. So nominative singular is patir. Genitive singular removes the Ida, potch, potter, and then adds the case endings. Patros, patri. Now in the accusative singular, it reduces the Ida down to an epsilon and then adds the case ending. Patera. And then we see that again in the nominative plural and genitive plural. Patera, pa pateres, pateron. And in the accusative plural, pateras, but the dative plural does what the genitive singular did before, removes the eta slash epsilon, then adds an alpha, and then the dative plural, sin, patrasin, okay? Um, we see in uh, idor, Idatos, idati, idor, idata, idaton, idasin, idata. Okay? So uh, the stem, idat. And then idor is going to be the nominative singular and accusative singular because idor is neuter. Okay, so it's going to match. And uh, whatever happens in the uh, genitive singular in this case is also going to happen in the, in the dative plural, but the dative plural, tav, can't be before sigma, so it drops out. So, again, it's irregular. You can see how it kind of blends some of the third declension and the second declension. Um, you can still recognize it, but really you're going to need to learn the nominative singular and genitive singular uh, in order to really get a grasp on these irregular nouns, which is why you should be learning the nominative singular and genitive singular with all of your vocabulary including the definite article. So each vocabulary word needs to have the nominative singular, genitive singular, and definite article with it so that you can really understand these words. All right, let's dive into avtos. Avtos being the masculine. Avti being the feminine, avto being the neuter. You know this word. It's the same word as in autonomy, self-rule, automobile. Um, I don't know, self-car. Um, it is the, uh, not the personal pronoun, but the uh, relative pronoun. 
Personal pronoun, sorry. Not the relative pronoun. That's next week. Is it next week? I don't know. It's, it's in, yeah, it's either next week or the week after. So avtos can be the personal pronoun, he, she, it, or they. It can function adjectivally, that is, reflexively. Um, or um, it could just simply be an adjective, uh, identical adjective, where you actually translate it same. So personal pronouns are the most common. Uh, avtos legi, so avtos being the subject. He said, again, legi itself as a verb has built-in pronouns. So when you see avtos here, uh, it, it is uh, for potential emphasis. Okay? It could also be the direct object, agapo avton, uh, I love him. It could show possession, teen piston avtu, his faith, or literally the faith of him. It could be um, gender number being determined by the antecedent. The antecedent is that which refers to the rest of the sentence. So if the antecedent is personal, avtos follows natural gender. If the antecedent is not personal, then avtos follows grammatical gender gender okay so the key here the noun to which it refers will agree in gender and number and then you translate avtos as it now it can be an adjectival intensive you translate it reflexively himself herself itself themselves so it's intense it's intensifying it's building on it um, and referring back to itself. It does this when there's a noun and then avtos is used adjectivally. Usually avtos will be in the predicate position. Generally, it's in the nominative case modifying the subject, but it's in the predicate position. It would not immediately be preceded by the article, though. It would agree, because it's functioning as an adjective, with uh, the noun it's modifying. So it would agree in case, number, and gender, because it's functioning like an adjective, and that's how adjectives operate. No article. It's going to agree in case, number, and gender, usually in the predicate position, usually in the nominative case. So here's some examples. E ecclesia of T, the church itself. Of T, predicate position, no article directly in front of it, and it's uh, clearly following in case number and gender with ecclesia, which is Feminine, nominative, nominative, singular. Ego avtos. I, myself. Uh, here it's matching uh, nominative, masculine, singular with ego. There's no direct, uh, definite article immediately in front of it. It is in the predicate position. Avtos o Jesus. Now this one's different. Avtos is not in the predicate position but there's no definite article in front of it. It is matching in uh, case, number, and gender with Jesus. So in this case, it is translated reflexively, Jesus himself. Same thing with Avtos David. In this case, it's harder to tell because David is uh, indeclinable. So you just have to know that it is um, masculine and then you just have to tell from the context that it's nominative singular and therefore avtos is matching it and it's, it's functioning 
adjectivally, which means it's intensifying, which means it's reflexive. That one's harder to see. Um, you get the same effect with Jesus avtos because avtos is in the predicate position. There's no definite article immediately before it, and it's matching uh, in case number and gender with Jesus. So it's, this, it's, it's the same thing as avtoso, Jesus. The only difference is it's word order, and there's no article um, before Jesus. And then si avtos, you yourself. It's in the predicate position. It's matching nominative, singular. Um, in this case, there's, it's not masculine, but it's in the predicate position. Now, it can be identical adjective where you translate it as same. It would be in the attributive position. Its case number and gender are determined by the word it modifies. It's functioning like an adjective, so it's still going to follow case number and gender. And it often comes before the noun, but immediately after the article. So in this case, most of the time, you'll have the article first, then avtos. Tone of tone logon, the same word. En of tt ora, in the same hour. Now this is the exception to the rule. Article does not immediately follow it, or uh, precede it rather. And that's it. So next week, I think we're going to dive into utos, I think is what it is. Uh, just follow the syllabus. Make sure you do the reading, uh, but subscribe. And when you subscribe, you can subscribe by hitting the, the fee in the lower left corner. I, I, I'm using the fee because um, uh, my streaming account for gaming on Mixer is Phonovone, which means Slayer. And that's because of Halo and the popular game type on Halo was uh, Slayer. And Halo is what really got me into video games. Anyways, so fee, click on that over there and then click subscribe. Once you subscribe, there's a little bell. Click on that bell and then it'll have some little parentheses around the bell. Uh, and that way you get notifications. So whenever I do a new video, you, you get instant notifications about it. Uh, or if I go live, you get instant notifications that I'm live. Uh, so it could be helpful. Uh, but please subscribe if you want. You can also uh, consider supporting me. Uh, the, the link is in the description below at streamlabs.com slash one um, Any support's appreciated, but it's not required. This class is free. And it's my pleasure and honor to do that um, because I want to help people learn the Bible, learn the New Testament, learn the Hebrew Bible um, with the original languages. I, I can't tell you how uh, vital and important it is for studying Scripture to do it in the original language. English, it's not sufficient. It's not. Let's just call it what it is. It's deficient. You got to learn Greek and Hebrew. It doesn't take a lot of effort to learn it um, and apply it. So next week will be our seventh lecture. Uh, I think we've got 27 total weeks. So we're moving right along. Seven weeks in, not, not too shabby. The last, I think, five weeks are translating First John. So really, um, what is that? 5, 22, carry the 1, 20. So yeah, that's 22, and we're already on week 7. So we're making good progress. Um, but keep at it. We'll see you again next Friday, not Saturday. Next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. And don't forget to follow the, uh, the Greek word of the day so you can build your vocabulary and gain some interesting insight into uh, the words that we're learning. Remember, um, within 30 weeks, 
we're learning all the grammar. Within 300 days, we're learning all the words that we need to really uh, be able to study the New Testament effectively. Now, you're not going to learn every word that's in the New Testament. But strategically, learn roughly 300 to 350 words, and that can help you sight read 75% of the New Testament. If you combine that with the grammar that you're learning, you're going to be able to have a very commanding understanding of the New Testament. Uh, and then you can use your other resources to further study and dive in uh, to what you're reading and, and um, illuminate what you're studying. So um, I hope you find that encouraging to know that within a year's time, you can really understand the New Testament in a whole new light. It doesn't take years of study. And then you could do the same thing with Hebrew. Fast forwarding to 2020, want to kickstart for that. Um, so stick around. Uh, you might learn something. That's the point, right? Don't forget to do the workbook. Keep studying. Keep at it. Uh, and then uh, if you want, you can join me on Friday mornings. If you have questions along the way, feel free to put it in the chat room. And uh, I'd be more than happy to talk about it, answer your questions. Um, and, uh, you know, we're kind of, we're in this together. And don't forget, you, there's also the comments in the uh, video itself. So um, if not in the chat room, you could put it in the um, uh, video comments on YouTube and I can answer your questions that way too. So if, um, you know, sometimes when you come late to dinner, supper's cold, right? Well, if you come late to this lecture series, that's okay. Um, that's kind of the beauty of YouTube with the archiving system, with the comment system. We can still uh, keep that supper nice and warm uh on the back burner uh so to speak gosh that's a that's a bit of a labored metaphor anyways that's enough uh from me today i'm gonna be in a tournament tonight on mixer.com slash phonavone for PUBG. so if you're interested in that game um come check it out um and uh we'll see you on the line and we'll see you next week bye, -bye.